for grabs tonight, a place in the 1994 Mobile Super League final as Melbourne take on Adelaide Garvel at the powerhouse. Melbourne boast experience and finesse up front with Leanne Mackey and Yolanda Whiteman. It's a super midcourt with Honey, O'Donnell and Kennedy, although Nicole Richardson may feel unlucky. They're backed up by a last line that is both agile and resolute, Narelle Eslick and Liz Tavener. Shelley O'Donnell has led this team to second on the table, defying critics who suggested they'd be lucky to make the semis, but her experience has helped draw the best out of a multi-talented lineup. The Australian centre court player has enjoyed the responsibility of captaincy. Avellino and Borlais have been perhaps the best performed shooting partnership in the competition. They've been on the end of plenty of drive from Abbott, Grant and Pierce, while Robin Gill and Michelle Filkey give away no easy goals. Coach is Pat Micken. Jenny Borlase brings to the semi-finals the best shooting percentage of any goaler. Her 85% shades even Vicky Wilson. Her consistency has helped get Garvel to the semis and to keep her place in the Australian team for this month's New Zealand tour. Well, it was a surprise to many when Melbourne defeated Garvel in their competition round here at the powerhouse. It was only one goal, but Garvel must feel that they've got to bring their best to this match to have any chance. No second chances in semi-final Super League. And Sergeant, this could be close. I think so. It's a really tough one to even talk about. I think Garvel haven't always been convincing throughout the series, though. But having said that, their experience and their ability to play as a unit might stand them in good stead. As you acknowledge, the shooting prowess is superb for the line. I think it's been refreshing to see Melbourne perform really well. Melbourne Netball has been in the doldrums for a couple of years, and this side's really lifted them out of that. I'm particularly impressed by their midcourt. I think there's a lot of spark there, and I just think let the players do the talking. OK, ready for the second semi-final. Melbourne and Garvel. Melbourne skipper Shelley O'Donnell gets us underway. So Melbourne running right to left. That in itself is a bit of a switch. Um, they've started another match just with Di Honey in the centre and switch later in the game. And the other selection point worth talking about is uh, Nikki Richardson being left on the bench. And uh, the, the strengths of um, Kennedy, Eslick and Richardson are an uh, interesting point. Yes, of course, Nikki Richardson also has Australian softball responsibilities and so she's been missing from a couple of rounds due to those commitments. And I'm sure many thought she would uh, re-enter in the semi-final match. They've elected, though, to go with a defence line that was uh, very good last weekend, very tight defence line. I think the thing, too, the other dilemma for them is uh, when they play Nikki Richardson, do they play her circle or wing? Uh, I guess they've just got a wealth of young talent. Pat Micken. Here's off to a bright start in the first minute. The two unanswered goals and Honey to O'Donnell. Kennedy. Sorry, that was uh, Eslick. And who's got it? Kennedy now to Whiteman, Mackey. Great hold from Mackey. I said before, the formula for Melbourne works well in that Leanne Mackey is not the greatest athlete on court. She plays her game from positioning and timing. Therefore, they need a very mobile um, athletic midcourt to swing the ball around and assist with that positioning. They've got that in O'Donnell and Honey, and it works very well. Great timing to Whiteman. Whiteman. Honey, great wing defender. Grant. Wing defender, contact, centre third. Pierce. Abbott. Goalkeeper. Pass or shot. <laughs> Tavern to put out of play. Avellino. Natalie Avellino is shooting 79% for the season. And ball is 85. They're just shading Mackie and Whiteman who are 78 and 75% each. Mackie and Whiteman, the only goalers used by Melbourne throughout the whole competition. They're the only club to have only used two goalers. Yes, I saw them use uh, another goaler in Townsville earlier in the year, although she hasn't appeared on their bench uh, throughout the season. So, um, obviously, dependent on that combination. Wing. Oh, wing defend. Kennedy has to leave it. That is moving on, wing defend, stand offside. Avellino. Makes the pass in the air, lands to uh, go to the post herself. Honey, Mackie. O'Donnell finds Whiteman unmarked. Gill falls into her now, but it doesn't matter. And a bright start from Melbourne. Grant, yes. 
and taken down by Kennedy. O'Donnell, Whiteman. Three seconds. Hell ball, says Nola Kalman. Maureen Boyle, the other umpire on this side. Goal defender, pass or shot. Always will take it. Manage break. Honey. Oh, great ball to Whiteman. Had her on full stretch, but. And had everybody else watching. It took them a second to offload that pass. Everybody else really stood back from it. Filky palms it out the back. Whiteman. The post well there. Well, we've got Michelle Filkey working very hard in the, the opening few minutes. Obstruction goal defence, both players out. Yolanda Whiteman going through it with the strength. Grant, ball lays. Abbott. I don't think the slow start will phase Garville at all. They're quite methodical in their play and uh, real workhorses. They link to go work together well as a team. So I think I'll be happy just to gnaw away, stay in touch. Mackey, cross court for O'Donnell. Whiteman, classic shot. And 7-3. And the long ball cross court switches play to allow Whiteman the drive to the base. She holds good position. She looks very relaxed on the shot. It's Melbourne again. Mackey, O'Donnell. A touch from Danny Grant. Mackey put the dodge on. There was very little room to move, though. She was contained nicely by Filky and Gill. Gill on court having been cleared by, from uh, an Achilles injury. Spills through the hands of uh, Abbott, but picked up by Borlase. Now Abellino. Garble through Grant. Abbott can't take it. Borlase cleans it up and a nicely timed pass to a very balanced Avellino. And another shot from Natalie. Back they come. There's absolutely no cause for panic in the slow start from Garble. They're just edging back now. I think the combination that exists within this Garble line, uh, that measure of experience, would make them uh, forget any thoughts of panic. They really understand each other's moves and timing extremely well. Calden sets the throw in. Mackey to Whiteman. Robin Gill holding on to the foot in the balancing act. Gill to Avelina. Avelina looking so loose, very relaxed. The thing about both these shooting combinations, Anne, is that they really do spread the work amongst them. Uh, Mackey. 208 goals, Whiteman 167 for the season, and Avellino and Bullays a similar spread, 208 and 194. Gang cross court used by Melbourne Kears to find Whiteman on the drive to the post. Yes, you're right, Steve. Many of the other teams rely heavily on, on one shooter or find that uh, the shooters really share the workload in goals, but both these teams are with very, very capable shooters. Honey, Whiteman. And don't they enjoy the speed and the drive that O'Donnell and Honey can offer towards that circle? <laughs> Melbourne midcourt has possibly been the pick in the Super League teams. And a battle for the goaling stats. Avellino on six straight. Yolanda Whiteman nine straight as Borlase drops one in her second of the match. High scoring first quarter, 18 goals in uh, eight minutes. Play. Filky. Go, 
High scoring because of the accuracy. Not too many turnovers. Avelino. For Peter Grant. Now both teams really putting out a performance of percentage netball in terms of placement of pass and goals. Eslick gives away the penalty. Ball A's won't miss from there. Entertaining first quarter from these two teams. Then score when they met in competition rounds a couple of weeks ago. 57-56 to Melbourne. What a wonderful shot from Natalie Avellino to equal the score on ten apiece. Oh, I just caught Australian coach Joyce Brown there and she was applauding that shot. Lavalina has been making quite a few noises in terms of her play about a place in the Australian team. She's been in great form. And I think uh, matches such as this can only reinforce their chances. The team, of course, named for the Tour of New Zealand, but another team to be named when Trinidad and Tobago come here later in the year. Eleven apiece. Five minutes left, first quarter. Mackie. Mackie taking the step to try and uh, draw distance from Michelle Filkey. Avelino to ball lace. Oh, ringed out. And Borlase gets a second chance. That's an intimidation call against Norella Eslick. There is Joyce Brown. And a lot of her Australian charges involved in the semi-finals. Almost several in the Sydney Electricity team nowhere to be seen, of course. There's a disappointing story, really, in 1994. Finalists last year, winners the year before, but uh, a lowly sixth this year. Yeah, they're truly a champion side with some outstanding players and unusual for a team of that colour to string so many losses together. Normally you might have a downer, then it's picked up again, but uh, just not enjoying the form they'd like uh, early on in the season. I'm sure it will return to them. Oh, it's wonderful stuff. Not able to finish though, but the crowd loved it. Avelino gets a touch and Garber will get the ball back. Well, Avelino really enjoying her time out there. She makes a run on the ball now. Two good options there for Danny Grant. Both Avellino and Borle is on the drive, wanting the ball. Whiteman uh, alone at the post, but he doesn't connect with the ball. That's it. Play. Filky to Gill. Honey nearly read it. Well, she did, but didn't get both hands to it. Abbott. Ball lays. And on the ball from yep. Eslick, so Avelino. Retake the penalty, no talking. Warren Boyle wants quiet from the players. Yes, the rules state that uh, you can't involve yourself in the game from an out-of-play position and that includes, of course, uh, calling your fellow player into position. Play! Here's the Kennedy, O'Donnell. Pilkey <laughs> picks up what was juggled by two or three players. Two and a half to go, first quarter. This game just played at a ferocious pace. Lots of accurate shooting. Close game, ball lays. Leslie caught, caught looking the wrong way, uh, really not open to the ball. And Garvel hit the lead. That is breaking. That is crossing, wing defender. That is offside. Oh, great work, Avellino. I had a sense it was coming. I was tempted to throw up myself. <laughs> as, as to how you stop it, I don't know. The timing was great. Enjoy this. Looks to the feeder. Sees that ball is there. Slams in. Play. 
You're not allowed to call from a commentary position, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Pass now. Yeah, it's not really the defenders just were drawn away from Borlase and Avelino top of the circle. Was had an unhindered pass to it. It's the same old story. Everybody on court knows the options. It's a matter of timing and making your move and your counter move at the right time. I don't think this game could offer us uh, any more than it is. Good touch there from Gill. The chase is on from Josie Pierce and superb backup. Garvel giving uh, their home crowd much to cheer about. Contact goal defender. Ball lays. Number 16. Well, after a sluggish first three or four minutes, Garvel oh, found wonderful. another another gear. Oh, Tavener was ducking out of the way of that pass and gratefully takes the result of uh, a replay. Yes, Tavener, one of the best uh, throughout the series. She's enjoying some fine netball as she develops uh, and aspires towards the national team. She's, of course, played at under-21 level and is someone that will no doubt be given the nod in future years. Becky, Melbourne need a couple here. Well, it's a quick little shot from her, a low release, and uh, really had Filke still on stretch uh, rather than uh, getting up at it. I'm sure she'll adjust the timing, though. Filke comes out, Rob Stein, honey. Honey actually had that in hands, but Filke was so strong and on the drive down court that she came away with it. Garvel having a wonderful time. Eslick drags down the rebound, and time called. Well, plenty to cheer about there for the Garvel fans. Their team was a little slow out of the blocks, but went to quarter time sprinting, and they lead it by two, 16-14 over Melbourne. Danny Grant for Garvel gets us underway second quarter, and perhaps Leanne Mackey, the only... Uh, uh, the goal is to will feel that uh, she needs to lift a little. Yes, it's uh, not usual for her to be sitting on 50%, but for the rest uh, on court, it's sort of good, great and fantastic. Seven from ten for um, Natalie Avellino, 70%, although well on target, looking very comfortable. Jenny Borle is 100%, nine from nine. As we said, Leanne Mackey dropping below her uh, average for the series to 50% with four from eight. And Yolanda Whiteman, impeccable, ten from ten. Bad instruction. So Garvel, 19 chances to 18, and winning the quarter by two. Avellino. And they put in the first two of the second quarter, so they're picking up where they left off. Avellino in great form, as is Borlase. Grant was stuck for an option there for two and a half seconds. Bounty just side centre. Both Garville shooters working hard from front position, holding their ground. Pass being dropped into that forward space. They look comfortable. Garville coach Pat Micken left the frame there. Looks like she's prepared this team to a nicety. Filky <laughs> feeds it out. Gill. Josie Pierce. Gill again. Abbott. Avellino chased out by Tavener and drives to the post. And that even draws applause from the national coach, Joyce Brown, as she enjoys the skills of Garvel. Josie Pierce picks up Gill on the drive. Abbott, Avellino drives on, puts it at the top and then hits the, the pedal down to the post. Garvel enjoying really open uh, play and uh, getting a drive to the post that you don't usually enjoy at this level of netball. Ball lays, had position there on Esley. It's 21-14. It's uh, five unanswered goals. Whiteman, Melbourne need three or four. And well, she was 100% in the first quarter. They won't drop in the second. Hey. Miss a piece for both Mackie and Whiteman, which is not what they need when Garvel's st starting to open up. An interesting decision too when we have mentioned they pretty well have run the same two shooters. And of course, Leanne Mackie is co-coach in the Melbourne Kia group. Contact goal defense, shot or pass. And the uh, Melbourne bench there, Nikki Richardson not playing. Robin English and uh, Barbara Atkinson, English co-coach with Leanne Mackie. 
not looking good for Melbourne. And at last a mistake from Gardel. I think we've been waiting quite a while to see an error, a, an unforced error come from them. Contact. As you say, perhaps uh, timing their run for finals time. Honey and O'Donnell have uh, swap bids for this second Play. quarter. So Honey back to Ball centre, O'Donnell wing attack. Penalty. Did you feel it was breaking down there? No, I think O'Donnell looked more uncertain there because she's been starting uh, at wing attack in other matches and I thought she took a while just to sight the ball. She does, I think, normally wear glasses. I just felt on the light she struggled the first couple of minutes to sight it. They do look more comfortable this way. But they obviously felt uh, they'd make the change earlier rather than later. Well, they're only down by two, but now it's nine. Well, Mackie knew that was short. She chased it straight away. And chased it quickly enough. That's the first goal for Melbourne uh, in the quarter. They trail 7-1. And ease and confidence about Garvel now. Enjoy uh, Jenny Borlase's shooting form here. She's sitting on 14 straight. High elevation, good release. Borlase. Abbott. Couldn't pass to Avelino. She was out of court. Now she's not. Avelino buries another. The lead is 10. Well, it'll be good work here from Tavener. She really holds up uh, Avelino. She's not available for quite a while, but when she gets it, how do you stop that sort of shot? Hold, goal defender, goal third. Feel disappointed by the call. She's been working uh, ferociously up the top, but uh, just gets a call on the hold. Whiteman. Whiteman's still on target. She's put up six from seven, the last six straight, so she's still comfortable in goals. It's just a matter of giving them more opportunities. Whiteman to Honey. Well, if they can keep this uh, margin under 10, Melbourne, they've got to be a chance, and with less than a minute to go in the quarter, they ought to be able to do that. Ball is will make it nine. And Melbourne would like to take the last one of the quarter, but that hand on it from Pierce and the clean up from Grant means the difference could be out to ten. What a great feeling for these shooters that every delivery to them is from a feeder who is planted solidly on the circle, really delivering from good position. They're not held off the circle, having to put it over hands. They're right on that circle edge. Grant. Well, that was a telling turnover in the last 25 seconds of that quarter. Garvel put the foot down at the start of the second quarter and the lead is out to 10 so Garvel at half time 35-25 over Melbourne Kias. Garvel up by 10 goals as they get us underway in the third quarter and their shooters are running well more than warm. <laughs> <laughs> For Garvel and that Avelino sitting on five from eight 62 percent that's below what she can normally do and certainly she implied more at the start of the game. Uh, Jenny Borle is uh, just an outstanding performance, maintaining 100% across the first half, 14 from 14 in that second quarter. For Melbourne, their co-coach sitting on four from eight, Leanne Mackey, 50%. She'd be disappointed with that, yet they've uh, continued with her, as opposed to Yolanda Whiteman, who's uh, put in a great effort also in goal, seven from eight. So she's really only had uh, one miss in that uh, second quarter, otherwise uh, great shooting. 22 to 16, the opportunities at goal. 
And Garvel won that quarter by 19 goals to 11. As Borlase puts in another for Garvel. And there are plenty of changes to tell you about in the Melbourne side. And Nicole Richardson is on at wing defence for Peter Kennedy. And Liz Tavener and uh, Narelle Eslick have swapped in defence. So Eslick out to goal defence. Liz Tavener back to goalkeeper. I think it's a move that had to come. Peter Kennedy really wasn't enjoying uh, too much share of the ball in chasing Sheridan Abbott. Uh, not the best we've seen from her. She's normally quite a dogged, a tight defender, but Abbott uh, running free there. And Richardson will be out there to look for some loose ball. And I think the switch with Taverner and Eslick would be a last minute one to match the positional switch that the Garvel shooters have put out. It's Avellino and Borlase swapping, thank you Anne, but that's something they do on a fairly regular basis at halftime, regardless of how they're going, as Nicky Richardson in shot now. Yes, we're used to seeing that, and I really think uh, that uh, the Melbourne Kia's bench, having sided that, decided they'd match up uh, and continue the match. Whiteman. Ball A's. Tip there from Richardson, but Abbott uh, still manages to keep it in play. Oh, she's just in magnificent form. Jenny Ball A's. Get my trusty statistician. <laughs> He's mouthing 26 to me. That's a I wonderful she, shooting. I think she's eclipsed uh, Amanda Grassick's effort. I think so. I don't know that it was necessarily in her mind. I think just to put out a best would be in her mind. Uh, she's been doing that consistently, but 26 straight, uh, pretty hard to match. Well, she uh, has chosen the right company in which to find this sort of fall with Joyce Brown here and the Tour de New Zealand not far away. Cusack and Wilson, the other two goalers making the tour. That's right, and all national selectors here, of course, watching the semi-finals and uh, later the final. Keeping a good close eye on the progression of uh, Australian squad players right throughout the year. Anita Mackey. One of the days where national selectors may just have come together as a group at the time of selection. They're pretty mobile out and about the traps watching all the top games. Abbott, four legs, Avelino. Tavener giving her far too much room on the starting position and Avelino enjoying it. Almost world championship uh, gymnastics that role there from Sheridan Abbott. <laughs> Richardson. Yes, we saw some uh, great competition up in Brisbane in the gymnastics and now world-class netball. We're certainly seeing some of the best netballers around anywhere on display with these two teams. Taken by O'Donnell. Oh, good work from Mackey. Put the drive on round Filky and uh, snuck in under the post. The pass was timed well. Intercept came originally from O'Donnell and she finishes with good work. Good vision there to see Mackie sneak in through the back door and hold space with the uh, landed foot. Honey. It's taken me a while, but I just worked out that Honey and O'Donnell have swapped again. So, O'Donnell back at centre and Honey at wing attack, which is where they started the match. They changed at quarter time, they've changed back again. Ball ace. Tavener forcing that backline space well, pushing Avellino off court and of course she hadn't grounded herself on court before taking that pass. Richardson, Mackey, touch from Gill. Well the comfort zone just starting to close here for Garvel. Melbourne Key is with a bit of a resurgence. A lot more drive now through the midcourt. That's uh, partly through Nikki Richardson's inclusion. 
And a nice play to the post then. It's back to six. And they do this very quickly. Melbourne Key is on the drive. Quick hands from Honey to find Mackey, and she uh, does the same to find Whiteman. Good positioning. And the resurgence of Melbourne has produced another error. A loose pass out of play, and Melbourne in possession. O'Donnell. Richardson. Down go O'Donnell and Grant. But uh, Melbourne retain possession. Uh, a little disguise on the pass from Whiteman paid off. And all of a sudden Mackey look far, looking far more comfortable too. Eight straight for Leanne Mackey. Whiteman still three from three. They've halved the ten goal deficit at half time. Mackey. A lot of reshuffling and a new lease of life for Melbourne. Mackey trying to make herself heard above the din here at the powerhouse. The Adelaide fans looking for a garble settler or two. Avellino finds one. Well, it would have been foolish to write off Melbourne at half time, even though they were 10 down, because they haven't got to the semis by chance. Whiteman really coming out the winner on the drive for the post. Robin Gill finding herself in chase position and of course uh, feeling all the worse when she watches those goals go through from Whiteman. Having her out, there's a two in the circle. They elect to play it wide instead of both working close on Eslick and the pass goes astray. Both these teams, five wins and two losses in the competition rounds. Garvel perhaps uh, may rethink this shooting positional switch they've put out. Uh, may elect to move Borlas back to goal attack and Sid Avellino back as shooter. It was a strange miss from Mackey. The air ball missed the hoop altogether, but Whiteman benefits from the contact made on her by Filke. And the difference is just three. And all of a sudden, all the flow, the drive has swung Melbourne's way. I always feel it's easier to make the initial break as Garvel did in that second quarter than to pull it back but this has been done very quickly by Melbourne. Just looking across Steve and Margaret Putris, the uh, All-Australian Netball President almost uh, leapt in the air and assisted Liz Tavener on that intercept, obviously enjoying what is a brilliant contest. Oh, nice turn there from Abbott. They really ran over the top of Avellino though but the play was nice. Avellino doing her best to clear out of the way then. feel the momentum and the fluency that we saw earlier in the Garville, the forward line is has come to a halt with the positional switch. Grant, Avellino, Abbott. A bit more urgency in Borlase's offer then. And uh, her first miss of the match, indicative of the pressure they're under as uh, Melbourne mount the charge. Richardson. Well, and a touch from Abbott. Here's picks it up. It was just a hesitation there on the player making herself available. And Garvel hungry for an intercept or two. Ball lads. Just laughing at the long bounce. Eslick was close to it. Richardson was within a, a longer nail of it. Garvel looked like they're steadying. O'Donnell to Honey. Richardson. Filky saw it coming. Filky brilliance at its best, and uh, that's of course the, t the caliber of intercept needed when uh, you're trying to maintain your balance and uh, stretch your lead out again. Ball aims. Yes. A little bit of luck to help them out to six goals again. And a lot of school from Filky. Melbourne in danger here of letting go a lot of good work they did in the early part of this quarter. Ball A's. She jabbed at that one, uh, lost the smoothness in the shot. Richardson, O'Donnell, Honey. O'Donnell again, Mackey, no. 
just too much adrenaline. She really had to fight off Danny Grant to a hold position at the top and uh, just too much on the ball. Grant back to Filky. Pierce to Abbott. Ball ace. Frantic work in the circle from Eslick and Tavener. <laughs> Interesting pass from Avelino. Oh, the Melbourne bench looking more than a little worried. English. Melbourne English and Leanne Mackey sharing the coaching duties. Mackey on court. Look when they got it back to three. They needed to press on. Garvel, uh, plenty of character in the team. Nola Kalman uh, sets the penalty. Oh, the timing on the dodge, good from Leanne Mackey, and on the delivery. Mackey with the throw in, puts it to the top. O'Donnell waits for Mackey to put uh, the re of the dodge on. She does it nicely. Melbourne's ball. Whiteman. Filky desperately calling Gill back to help her uh, close up the space on Mackey. I think well aware that Mackey snuck through the back to pick up post as she <laughs> manages again. We talked about positioning being her area of expertise. Avelina. Abbott. Ball A's. Easily caught straddling Ball A's is a uh, planted foot. She really needs to get out around Ball A's work front more instead of uh, sitting on that back position. Whiteman. Really has the pace of this match slowed. Filky, well, her fitness an example to netballers uh, Australia wide. She's really putting in 100% effort, well, as she does every game. Ball ace. And she can thank Michelle Filky at the other end. And this is where it'll start. Watch closely. Filkie's guarding the base. Full stretch. Pulls it out from nowhere and keeps it alive. The tip onto Grant. A minute and 15 seconds out from three-quarter time. Ball lays. Melbourne must score at least once in this closing 60 seconds. Whiteman on the baseline. Joyce Brown from Melbourne. I'm sure absolutely impartial, though. Absolutely. All ace. Excellent work with Abbott in the lead up. Honey. Oh, that was ambitious. Filky with the aerial skills on Mackey. High ball like that. <laughs> White under a little right hook there. It uh, didn't really connect. Robin Gill uh, lost the back patch uh, some minutes ago. Avelino. Ball A's, hungriest. And the last goal doesn't count. The whistle went before the ball dropped through the hoop. And that was a stronger effort from Melbourne, but they needed to press on with it in the last five minutes of the quarter, and Garvel came up with an answer. So 49-42 at three-quarter time. So the last 15 minutes to decide who joins contacts in the Super League final well, Leanne Mackey doing her best to make sure it's Melbourne. A great effort in that third quarter. She's really lifted the accuracy right when they needed it. 12 from 13 for Leanne Mackey, 92%. Yolanda Whiteman dropping slightly to 62% with 5 from 8. For Garville, Borlase, 9 from 12. 
So she allowed herself to miss three in the entire game so far. 75%. Natalie Avellino running at goal attack, five from seven, 71%. Oh, Mackie. So one apiece in the first 30 seconds. Melbourne looking for some early turnovers to put the pressure on Garvin. To stop an all Adelaide final. Avellino has been calm and accurate, not just tonight, but right through the Super League. And a spill from Honey into the hands of Grant. Filky. Now Abbott, the ball lays leads out. Richardson picks up the scratch. I don't really see too much need to swing that on from Borlase when she's been shooting so well. It would have been a great time to steady and go to the post. Out of the hands of Whiteman into Gill. Grant. Avellino. Abbott to Borlase. Borlase shoot this time? No. Has found better position. <laughs> Melbourne won that third quarter, 17-14. To reduce the margin to seven, but there you see it's out to ten in just over two minutes. So this was not the start to the quarter that Melbourne needed. Whiteman to Mackey. Tight girls there, yeah, Mackey. Big defensive effort she wants. Borlase has it from close range. And with contacts watching this match, knowing they already have a final spot you'd wonder should Garva win what more they can learn by watching the two Adelaide teams would have to know each other inside and out it was Garva that won the state league wasn't it yes Shelley O'Donnell disappointed hey. this turnover Two teams met, of course, uh, first match. This competition contacts the victors. 50 to 47, the score. I think that was the match in which Paul Lays went off uh, having turned her ankle, wasn't it? And, uh, That's right. Young Michelle Kelso came on and, and played well. In fact, they, they drew, I think, the last quarter. They were down by three at three-quarter time. That's right. At the beginning of the season, Garvel, in fact, struggling to have their two key shooters on the court at the same time. Prior to Borlase's injury, uh, Nat Avellino, of course, uh, recovering from uh, illness. And uh, then, of course, having an appendectomy. So <laughs> she was in the wars early on. They've recovered at the right end of the competition. Eslick to Richardson. O'Donnell. Tavener. Whiteman. Honey. Mackey. I was just enjoying the drive from Liz Tavener through the mid uh, third. She's uh, relishing the run out at goal defence. Contact against Filky. And the difference is seven, ten to go. Melbourne still in search of two or three big turnovers. Essek really sat back on that. She uh, gave away too much distance on a starting position and just sat watching. Avellino to Grant, holds it back and then fires it in. Eslick caught to a well-off pace there. 
And an intercept from Filkey at the other end. Finds Garvel pressing again. Pierce. Avelino. Grant. Orlais. Richardson was in the circle. Offside. Oh. Get short change from Sheridan Abbott. Donald, Honey, Mackie, Whiteman checks her options and goes for this one, Filky with the rebound, has taken a swag of those today. And halfway through the final period, that was Whiteman's first attempt at goal, Mackie's still upping the workload, she's put in five straight, so as the game's gone on, she's really increased uh, her effort. Borlase putting the drive out of the circle to free it up for Avellino to have a one-on-one -on -one situation and she puts a reverse pivot on then and actually rolls into uh, Esley. Eight minutes left. Nine is the lead. looks as though she uh, might be taking a place in the final. She looks happy. <laughs> I can't tell how you can tell how she is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's nearly a smile there. <laughs> well, she was closer to a smile than a friendly. Yes, there it, there it is. There You're it is. You're a psychic. <laughs> I think she was considering maybe the final. German chase from Abbott, but uh, Melbourne ball, Richardson. Whiteman under pressure from Avellino, sorry, Tavern under pressure from Avellino. Richardson. Hey. Michelle Filkey, really a hero in this town. And she was introduced to the crowd before the match. She got the loudest cheer. Contact call against Avellino. Tavener. Honey. Melbourne looking for the quick route to the post. Mackie. Mackie. O'Donnell fires into Mackie, who's really increased her workload on the field. And Garvel have never looked down to protect the lead. They've always looked to build it. Yes, I think by the slow start, they've looked like they've been in control. It's been Melbourne in the chase, and although they've made up some ground, Garvel very quick to uh, redress it and get on with it. <laughs> Under a minute left. Garvel by nine. Avellino to make it ten. Oh. Right them into the final. Garvel and contacts. Borle is 10 from 12 as they run at home. Avellino 5 from 6. Contact against Mackey. Grant. Abbott. Borle. Garvel still with a sense of urgency of expanding the margin. I don't think we could say there's a player out there who has, has played badly tonight. This has been a, a game of great quality, but Garvel, just with the edge, nearly fell into the hands of Borlase off the post. I mean, we've, we've often said there doesn't seem to be a weakness in the, in the Garvel side. That's true, though, of contacts as well. And they'll be the two sides who meet in the final. A game effort from Melbourne. They started very brightly.
but with great composure and just as much skill, Garvel have swept home to take a place in the Super League final and to defend the title they won last year in their first year of the Super League. Garvel over Melbourne, 65-54. Well, there were seven excellent players out there for Garvel tonight. None better, though, than Natalie Avellino, who's talking with Ann Sargent. Thanks, Steve. Well, Nat, congratulations on a great performance. Slow five minutes, but you really saved your best towards the finals and the rest of it. We certainly did, yeah. We did have a very slow start. I don't know why. We were all revved up, ready to go. But um, we did come back in the end, even though they caught up to us, but we kept going on. Hard to fold anybody on court. It really has been a great team effort from Garvel. Yeah, we're a very close team, and um, we play as teams, even though we do have some very good individual players we all bring it together as a team and no one really stands out individually which is good to see at the beginning of the competition did you really think it would come down to an all Adelaide final uh, being in, in Adelaide the finals being in Adelaide uh, I think so yeah because we always like playing in front of our home crowd and Goval and contact is always a fantastic game at the powerhouse so let's hope we can see a good game in the grand final well let's look to that you guys must know each other inside and out what's it going to take to beat contacts um, I just think we've got to be steady and consistent and steady with our shots, our tight defence. You know, we know each other's game and it's just going to be who's going to be the best on the day. And assuming it's a Garvo win, give us a margin. Six. <laughs> now, congratulations on the place in the final and best of luck for them. Thanks, Anne. Steve, they're all smiles and you heard it from Nat. She's picking Garvel by six. Well, it's a promoter's dream. Contacts and Garvel, the two Adelaide teams in the final at the powerhouse in Adelaide. It'll be a bumper crowd and a special atmosphere because these two teams, their rivalry goes way back. It'll be a beauty. Saturday afternoon on ABC Sport. I do hope you can join us. Until then, I'm Steve Rebillion. Bye for now.